a huge bitch. There was a time not too long ago where the only Star Wars content we got were comic books and novels and mountains upon mountains of video games. While a few of them had the shelf life of milk, and I'm looking at you, Connect Star Wars. <laughs> there were some fantastic Star Wars games like Knights of the Old Republic and The Force Unleashed. However, the Star Wars Extended Universe changed in 2012 when the House of Mouse purchased Lucasfilm. And well, 11 years later, things have changed. We've got a complete reboot to the Extended Universe, some movies which some are good, some not so good, so we got some TV shows which again, some good, some not so good, but not many video games, at least not compared to the mid 2000s. At the time, EA and DICE gave us Battlefront and Battlefront 2, which sadly needed some post-launch content to provide a smooth and fun experience. Sadly, the launch of Battlefront 2 left a sour taste in some fans' mouths, and the announcement of another Star Wars game, this time developed by Respawn, the developers behind Titanfall and Apex Legends, didn't excite fans as much as it should have. However, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order completely blew expectations out of the water with a fantastic single-player experience. We followed the story of Cal Kestis, a Jedi Padawan who survived Order 66 and gained the unwanted attention of Imperial Inquisitors, basically Jedi Hunters. From there we met the crew of the Mantis with Grease and C, we befriended a surviving Knight Sister on Dathomir with Meryn, and attached ourselves to the adorable BD-1 droid. Now four years after the release of Fallen Order, we continue Cal's story in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I'm Cal, this is BD-1. My battable mum dubbed me Scuba Stev. Scuba the Fisher, am I? Scuba Steve! Damn you! You like that? Set five years after the events of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Cal has grown, as has the crew of the Mantis. Cal is now a member of Saw Gerrera's partisans fighting the ongoing war against the Empire alongside BD-1. After five years of constant fighting, Cal is constantly on the run from the ever-growing and powerful Empire. And after a great reintroduction to Cal and BD-1, we notice that Cal isn't doing missions with his original crew, and the Mantis is now Cal's ship. With the ongoing war taking its toll, Cal makes a discovery on an outer rim planet that might help with his fight against the Empire. If you enjoyed Fallen Order, then Survivor will be very familiar while also being refreshing at the same time. If for whatever reason you didn't play Fallen Order, or you simply just want to jump straight into Survivor, the overall gameplay is commonly summarised as Dark Souls meets Uncharted, with combat that can be taken strategically, mixed with exploration that's entertaining. Thankfully, Cal retains all of his traversal and force abilities from Fallen Order at the start of the game, and continues to grow as a Jedi. You'll have Force Push, Pull, Freeze, the ability to double jump, Wall Run to quickly climb, as well as have access to Cal's double bladed lightsaber right from the start. As you'd expect, Cal also learns some new traversal and combat abilities, one of which being a small grappling hook used quickly to anchor and zip yourself to a point a little similar to the meat hook in Doom Eternal or the quick zip in Marvel Spider-Man. Now, as it has also been five years since Fallen Order, Cal has also learned some new abilities like Jedi Mind Trick. I'm going to go across the street and get you some orange sherbet. And this can be used in story moments for when Cal needs to get information provided from a character, or it can be used in combat and traversal by using stormtroopers to unlock locked doors or for them to temporarily fight on your side. Speaking of fighting on your side, Cal now has companions a little similar to Mass Effect or Knights of the Old Republic. Cal can fight alongside Knight Sister Meryn or the new scoundrel Bode. Cal can also ask Meryn or Bode to use special attacks during combat like throw down an EMP grenade to stun enemies or using Knight Sister magic to pin down targets. Unlike Mass Effect, Dragon Age or Knights of the Old Republic before it, Cal doesn't have a companion with him at all times. If you're traversing the open worlds of Survivor or you're doing one of the many different side missions, Cal won't have a companion as they're generally only available for major story missions. Besides providing new traversal abilities and companions, Cal now also has different stances of lightsaber combat. Previously, titles like say Star Wars Jedi Academy allowed us to change our lightsaber form and even different weapons, such as say we could use the double bladed lightsaber. Here in Survivor though, Cal can learn five different lightsaber stances, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. 
The first two you have access to are the standard single-bladed stance and the double-bladed lightsaber, which carries over from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. However, as you progress, you'll unlock the dual-wield stance, which is very similar to Ahsoka Tano with a main blade and then a shorter style blade. The two stances though that I couldn't stop using was the blaster stance, where Cal has a lightsaber in one hand and a blaster in the other. And as you attack with your saber, you build up energy for your blaster, which replaces Cal's standard heavy attacks. Now, while the gameplay doesn't turn into a third person shooter, it does play a little bit like Red Hood in Gotham Knights, where one button is range attacks and the other button is, well, swinging your lightsaber. And this stance is a little bit of the fighting style of Count Dooku with the blaster sassiness, if you will, of Han Solo. And the final stance is the crossguard made famous by Kylo Ren, the only good character in the sequel trilogy. But y'all don't say that. Cal's saber has been upgraded to have the side blades and a longer hilt, and this stance is slow but incredibly powerful while also being great at defense. Ouch, town population, you bro! The challenge is though, you can't swap between all five different lightsaber stances as Cal can only have two ready at any time, but these can be changed out at meditation points or at workbenches. With this though, some battles need to be approached with different tactics. For example, enemies that barrage you with blaster fire, the double bladed sort of style of weapon, will work great at deflecting shots back at the target, basically Darth Maul, where the dual wield Ahsoka Tano style stance is really good for dealing rapid damage. Workbenches in Survivor return where Cal can change out parts and customise his lightsaber, but also his blaster and customise BD-1 a bit more. Previously in Fallen Order, a lot of these swap out parts were pieces that you could actually use to make a lightsaber when you go to the Star Wars section in Disneyland or Disney World, where here in Survivor they're more unique pieces. There are changes to weapon colours too, with loads of different options for grips, what condition the weapon is in, as well as if you want to apply any polishes. The general gameplay, while very similar to Fallen Order, feels more polished and also quicker. Cal's movement speed though feels roughly about 20% faster to how he moved in Fallen Order and it's needed as Survivor is now more of an open world game. Now previously there was exploration in Fallen Order but here in Survivor most planets are completely open for Cal to explore, either on foot or on a mount. Steady, steady. With that there are hundreds of collectibles to find, challenges, hidden bosses, hidden temples to the point where it starts to feel like Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a bit like Breath of the Wild. Now just like in Fallen Order there are multiple worlds in Survivor but the main core world is Kobo which is a little similar to Bagano from the first game. Kobo serves as Cal and the crew's base of operations as well as being a large open planet for you to explore. Now the planet or the base has a similar vibe to the Normandy in Mass Effect in that you can save and recruit people to your base, you can play holo chess, you can listen to music, you can collect fish, and yes gardening does return from Fallen Order but it's a bit more interactive now. One of the louder complaints that some fans had though with Fallen Order was the customization options with Cal. We could customize Cal's lightsaber with colors, materials, emitters and switches and it was nothing short of brilliant. Sadly though, the customization for Cal was lacking as we could only change the colour of his standard outfit and some ponchos. And this was the same with BD-1 and the Mantis, where it was just a simple colour swap out. Thankfully though, the team at Respawn have listened to their community and customization options for Cal in this game are incredible. We can swap out Cal's jacket, his pants, his shirt with the option to change the colour of each item. We also have the option to change Cal's hair and facial hair. There's even multiple shops in the game with no microtransactions where we can purchase clothing, lightsaber parts, blaster parts, BD-1 parts and hair options for Cal as well as find them out in the wild. For my playthrough as Cal is older and had been working with Saw Gerrera, I gave him a long beard and dressed him a bit like a rebel leader, but as I progressed in the story and grew as a Jedi, I made Cal look a little bit like Dash Render before finishing with him looking like Ram Coda from The Force Unleashed. Those were passed out in the cargo hold. I finally came to. While Survivor is a fantastic sequel to Fallen Order, there are a few drawbacks. What? Now I played this on PC with a 3070, 32GB of RAM and an Intel i9 and I found during multiple points the frame rate would dip to around 15 to 20 frames per second when exploring out in the open world or even as something as simple as opening the galaxy map. And multiple times from this too, Cal would fall off edges, fail to jump, or block crucial attacks. 
The core story too for Survivor has the same problem as Fallen Order. Fallen Order's main story was centered around opening a Jedi vault and retrieving a holocon which showed force sensitive children to rebuild the Jedi Order. But as Fallen Order takes place before the events of A New Hope, we know that the Jedi Order isn't rebuilt. But the main villain in the Second Sister and the Inquisitors was what kept the story flowing, with the final mission being fantastic. So good that the Obi-Wan Kenobi series flat stole it. Lisa, what's the answer to number seven? Survivor, on the other hand, doesn't have an enemy as imposing as the Second Sister, and the Empire aren't the core focus or enemy in the story. Now that's not to say the core villain or story is weak, it's just not as engaging as being chased by the Imperial Inquisition. The score slash soundtrack 2 for Survivor isn't as memorable as Fallen Order. In most instances, the villain is as good as their introduction. Look at Darth Vader, Michael Myers, Sauron, the T-800, shit, even Ivan Drago. Come on, get your hands up, man. You need an interpreter? It's time to go to school. You will lose. You're gonna die. And the music is a key component to this. The introduction of the second sister was unique and chilling. The score The Inquisition by Stephen Barton and Gordy Harb in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is tense and it sounds more like a horror movie than Star Wars with deep brass and frightening strings. Adoran, someone I killed perhaps. What Jedi gave their life so that you might live? Sadly though, the score in Survivor sounds like generic Star Wars and the soundtrack left no real lasting impression. Other than that, the only problem I have with Survivor that I had a little with Fallen Order, but more so here, is customization. Now, as I said, I started the game with Cal looking like a rugged member of the Rebel Alliance before picking some armor that made him look like Dash Render. And I found myself going with a look that, yeah, looks like Ram Coda. But I found myself constantly going into the customization menu or the workbench looking at what jacket does this look like and how does this go with this and changing my lightsaber colour constantly and to the point where I mentally sort of made Cal evolve in my head. Then once I finally picked an outfit, found that the lightsaber on Cal's belt would clip through his cape or through the jacket and small moments like that just kinda broke me but hey, this point is just purely personal. Why are you the way that you are? Having said that, the character development in Star Wars Jedi Survivor feels heavily inspired by, say, The Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. Every character has developed and matured, and fans of Fallen Order will love seeing Meren, Grease, and Sea again, as well as how they've changed after the events of Fallen Order. We see Cal at the start of Survivor, and seeing how far he's grown over the past five years is a little similar to how we see Luke at the start of Return of the Jedi, but not as cool because nothing is as cool as Luke in Return of the Jedi. I'm gonna take your fucking collar off, Walter. Come here. Thank you. Now do what you want. Right. Star Wars Jedi Survivor does what every sequel should do. Improve from its previous release, add new gameplay features, and fix any issues the community had with its previous entry. Whether you're a hardcore Star Wars fan or simply just loved Fallen Order before it, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the Empire Strikes Back to Fallen Order's A New Hope.